everybody, it's Jen with Cake-tastic Cakes, and I haven't done like a traditional video in a little while now, but here we go. Here it is. I wanted to show you this Witch's Cauldron cake that I made. I made it for uh, my son's school's Adams Family production, and it came out cool. It was a lot of fun, and it wasn't hard, so I figured tis the season, right? So let's go. All right. I'm using cake scraps that I had. I had some extra batter that I had made into cakes. And I had um, two regular, uh, these were eight inch cakes. And then the one on the top you're gonna see is kind of domed. It was baked in a Pyrex bowl, like an eight inch Pyrex bowl. So it's nice and round on the top. I trimmed off the bottom a little bit with a knife just to kind of make it taper in and tuck in a little bit so it's more rounded. But I didn't go crazy with it because I know um, I was gonna have the fire at the bottom. So it wasn't really gonna matter anyway. So yeah, why stress over it, right? Okay, so I crumb coated it with some regular buttercream icing. This is just American buttercream. I like to do sculpted cakes in this. I know some people like ganache. If you do, go for it. But again, you know, this was a free thing, so I was using what I had available. I covered it with some black fondant, and I'm just smoothing it down, uh, really trying to tuck in the corners. And it did pretty good. I gotta say, I didn't really get too many wrinkles or ripples or little folds that can happen, especially when you go from like a wide area of cake and then try to tuck it in tighter just like a little bit by my hand there but it'll get covered by a decoration so who cares now I've got some more of the black fond in here and I'm just rolling it into a couple of long little hoses um, these are going to become the outline to the top of my cauldron and I don't know if I mentioned I didn't mention no sorry I left the top of my cauldron flat uh, I didn't round it off um, the Pyrex bowls do have like a little bit of flatness to it so I left it alone. I didn't make it perfectly round on top because being a cauldron, you know, you don't want that. You want it to be pretty flat on top. So yeah, so I used that one round 2B thing that I just rolled out to outline the top of where my cauldron's gonna sit. I'm trying to smooth it out, make it nice and even. And I'm gonna do it again a couple more times in order to make the handles for my cauldron. I rolled out one big long one, as you can see here. And now I'm going to cut it in half, so that way they're the same size. A little hack. <laughs> I don't know if it's a hack. <laughs> I don't think it counts as a hack. It's not that fancy or special. But it makes it easy to make them the same size. So yes, there you go. Got one on each side. I attached it with a little bit of water, so it just stuck right on there. It was no problem. And if at any point, if you decide to make this, you feel like your cake is a little too soft, stick it in the fridge for 20 minutes, let it set up, bring it back out, and keep going. I put a little rectangle of fondant over each of the seams on the handles, and it also made it look like that's where it attached to the pot. So it just gave it a better look. Yeah, you can see right there at the base of the pot, there's a little, little fold, little wrinkle. And on the top of my pot um, where it came together, I didn't bother blending it because I'm just going to cover it with a decoration. If you decided to make this and not have it covered, um, then just take a moment and, uh, you know, smooth it out, blend it together. That was just a piece of some green and yellow fondant or gum paste, I forget which one it was, that I mixed together. So it was kind of swirly looking, and then I just stretched it and made it fit across the top to look like my brew, I guess you could say. This is going to be the fire for the bottom of the pot. This is gum paste now. Uh, I should have used fondant, I'm not going to lie. I usually am like 100% team gum paste, but in this case they set and hardened and then because the cake was rather large and heavy and just on a cardboard cake plate when I moved it around um, they would just pop off they would just kind of get wiggled loose like a little loose tooth and just fall off so I had to do a lot of repair work which ideally as you know you don't want to have to do upon delivery okay so we'll pretend it's fondant and it's not going to fall off when you move it around so I'm just taking those I just made wavy cuts as you saw and um, yeah, I'm just sticking them to the side of the cake here and there. I spaced it out, so I did yellow all around. And then I went back in between with some orange. And again, just a little bit of water to make it stick. And that was pretty much it. Like, it, it wasn't a lot. If you feel like it's too much, if you don't want the fire, if you have a better way to make fire, go for it. Because it came out fine, but I wasn't in love with it. All right, this is just some orange gum paste again. And I rolled it into a long kind of tentacle there just with my hands. I'm taking balls of a lighter orange and putting it on the side and then hollowing the center with my ball tool there to make suction cups to make it look like a tentacle. I did the tentacles on the sides and the top because otherwise you're not going to see them. If they're underneath it's going to fold over the side of my pot and then you wouldn't even see them and they look cool. I wanted people to appreciate it. 
this is going to be just a bone. So I rolled out a long piece between my hands, left a big knob at the end that I split in half, as you saw, with just the back of my knife. I didn't want to cut it. I just wanted to make pressure. And I'm just kind of, yeah, just accenting it, just roughing it up a little bit, making it, make sure it doesn't lose its shape. I put a lollipop stick on it. It's just a cardboard lollipop stick. And smooth it down to make sure you don't misshape it. And that's it. Now, this is going to be just a centipede or a millipede, whatever you want to call it. It's just some beige that I laid on some white gum paste. This is all gum paste again. As you can see, the one end is flat, the other end is rounded and sticks out past the white. Cut little triangles out along the edges and make some ridges down its back. And then there you go. Like easy, like real easy. Not, not a hard bug at all. Okay, this is going to be my eyeball, so I started with a white ball, of course. I didn't worry about making it perfectly round because it's going to be sitting in the pot. I put a circle of blue gum paste, a circle of black for the pupil and the iris, and I'm using my pen to just make a little bit of marks on the iris, and I'm using my red food coloring marker. It wasn't a pen, I'm sorry. It's, a, it's all food coloring markers. This is all edible. And I'm using the red to just make some veins because it was a veiny eyeball that I threw in the pot. So yeah, once those are done, then it's time to stick them in. You can always add more decorations to it if you wanted to as well, like throw a spider in there or throw a hand or, you know, finger, whatever your comfort level is. But this is what I went with because I felt like it was good enough. And apparently the kids loved it. They had to put someone at the table to guard it because people kept trying to touch it. So that to me says it was a success. Yeah, so there you go. Nothing too hard. But a really good effect and a really fun Halloween themed cake. So I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe because it really does help me out. I've got a lot of other videos out there Halloween themed as well. So take a look around, see if you like anything. And as always, thank you for watching Cake Tastic Cakes.